This week it's the amazing Ferrari LaFerrari, and a gorgeous Italian sports car buried in the 1970s finds a new life above ground. That's all today. It's Drive on NBC Sports. Coming up, I get to drive Ferrari's latest supercar on the road and, like a hooligan, on a proper race circuit. But first, it was the rowdy 1970s. Car theft was spiking in Southern California. 3,000 vehicles went missing each month in Los Angeles County alone. Most were never seen again, some dismantled and sold for parts, others driven right into shipping containers and sent to eager buyers overseas. But one stolen sports car beat the odds. It was a rare Dino, swiped off an LA street in 1974. Three years later, it quite literally surfaced as police found it buried under a backyard in South Central. And despite years in the dirt, it survived. But who did it and why? And where is it now? Drive's Mike Spinelli solves the mystery of the buried Dino, from the damp underground to the sun-drenched highways of California. Let's watch. It was just one of those stories that came out of just web surfing. One day I just happened to be surfing around on Tumblr. Just a, a black and white photo popped up on somebody's Tumblr page. It was a Dino that was being pulled out of the ground. And it was just a really compelling photo. I had never heard of a story of a Dino being unearthed, you know, anywhere before. Luckily we live in the age of Google and it took, you know, obviously almost nothing. I just started Googling buried Dino and I found the original story that ran in the LA Times. Some kids had been playing in a yard in a house in South Central or nearby South Central. It had been raining and they were playing in the mud and they came across something in the mud that felt like the roof of a car. Wow, that's something that doesn't happen every day, right? So they flagged down a couple of sheriff's deputies, dug a little bit more, and they realized, hey, there's, yeah, obviously there's a car here. So it's something we need to deal with. So they dug it up, and the uh, newspaper photographers were there. And that was 1978. I thought it would make a pretty good, just sort of a random kind of cool car culture post on Jalopnik. So I wrote it up. Kind of to my surprise, it ended up becoming a pretty big, well-read story. So next thing you know, I get a call from a guy who says he owns the car. And I'm thinking, owns the car? Hello, Mike. Uh, it's Brad Howard calling. Yeah, listen, I read your story about the Barry Dino. Just want to let you know that you had it pretty good up until the point that the car was stolen. I've had this car since 1978. Let me know if you want to see it. I'm in the L.A. area. The story behind the car is that it was purchased in 1974 from Hollywood Sports Car. The guy had bought it for his wife's birthday. They had it for about a week and decided to take a nice dinner outing. And uh, lo and behold, when they came out from dinner, they had no car. It was gone. So after Brad got in touch with me, I wanted to track down the other players in the Barry Dino story. Unfortunately, I found out that Joe Sabus, one of the, uh, the detectives, uh, passed away in 2005. And I had a suspicion that the LA Times had gotten the other detective's name wrong. Lenny Carroll, right, was, was, the, was the name in the, uh, in the LA Times piece. And I couldn't find any record of any Lenny Carroll or Leonard Carroll or anything like that it had ever been a sheriff's deputy in LA County. I just kind of had a suspicion that it was Dennis, like it would have been Denny Carroll. And so I found an organization that represents retired sheriff's deputies. His name was Dennis Carroll. My name is Dennis Carroll, D-E-N-N-I-S-C-A-R-R-O-L-L. -L. Unlike the newspaper article, uh, kids in the neighborhood didn't contact us. My partner and I, Joe Savas, so we had an informant 
and the informant led us to the address and we weren't sure about it. It sounded silly that anybody would bury a car, especially a Ferrari. Well, he was a heroin addict, I remember that. And uh, we went by it, he said, that's the house, the car is buried back there in the backyard. But what he said was, the owner wanted to collect insurance on the car and he asked these guys to, to take the car, dismantle it, destroy it, get rid of all the evidence. But when they took it home, they liked the car so much, they decided to keep it and bury it rather than destroy it. Once we found the car, then his whole story became kind of credible. It's like the Huntsman in Snow White, right? The Huntsman couldn't land the dagger. These guys couldn't land the chainsaw. They just fell in such, such in love with it, those curves and that, you know, that the, uh, the flared fenders and the, the beautiful green paint. They just loved it so much that they, they couldn't kill it. And so they buried it and they never came back for it. And three years later, it was still in the dirt and um, that's when the uh, sheriffs dug it up. Coming up next on Drive. You know, it's one thing to go 200 miles an hour, but you can never find a place to really do that legally, not even close to. At least at Dino, you can get the performance out of it. It's just an amazing handling car. 